Who of you is uh, online on the Things Network forum? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I see some people here and there. Then you probably know Jose Gabriel Marcelino, because he's very active on the forum. And well, what you get then, then you have to do a workshop, you do a lecture, and also a lecture here. So he's quite busy uh, these days, uh, so we're very thankful for that. He's a developer at PyCom. Uh, he's a computer scientist with a lot of experience in IoT. Um, and PyCon, well, they delivered the Laura one well, use, of course. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jose Gabriel Marcelino. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Chris, for the in, uh, great introduction. Um, so I'm here today to talk about uh, LoRaWAN modules uh, for people who are developing products around LoRaWAN. I, as Chris said, I'm uh, now uh, with PyCom. I'm a solutions architect there. Uh, so my, a bit of my history. So I started in 2013, I, my own company around IoT designs. Back then, we were doing uh, Bluetooth LE mostly. Uh, and then I got very interested in long-range radio as well, because that's very useful for uh, doing uh, many systems around IoT. And uh, Laura was starting to be uh, mentioned back then. So I emailed Winky uh, some late-night crazy idea back in 2015. And to my surprise, he replied the next morning. And he was actually very uh, positive about it. The idea was completely stupid now, I realize. But it, it, was, it was good. So it got me engaged. Uh, I, um, I, of course, backed the Kickstarter. I also started on the forums and became a very active member of the, of the forum, actually, uh, answering lots of questions and uh, spending a lot of time there. Uh, I'm also part now of the Newcastle upon Tyne, so I live in the UK, uh, up north in Newcastle, and I've also started the TTN there. We have uh, several gateways now there already. I, pr I helped the um, local makerspace as well on uh, LoRa development. I'm also involved in all kinds of networks now at PyCom, so we, we, we support everything from LoRa, Sigfox, LTE, everything. But LoRa is still very, very special to me because it's uh, kind of the first one I, uh, I learned about in long-range radio. Um, so a little, that's about me. Now a little bit about this talk. So why, why should people use modules? Uh, so there are... If you want to create a product, you could just buy the chips from Semtech directly. They'd be happy to sell them to you. However, you wouldn't have a stack to run. You'd have to do a lot of testing. And, and you maybe you don't imagine, but there is a lot of software behind uh, the a simple LoRa module. And you, if you realize you create a product and uh, then you have to support it as well to your customers. And then if you do it your on your own, then you have to do it all, everything. So it's everything falls on you, any problems. Uh, so that's, so I, I'd suggest that to, at least to start with, you should look into pre-certified modules that you know will work for your product that have been RF tested, so all the radio stuff has been dealt with by someone else who is responsible for it. Uh, so this talk, I'll. Uh, so th yeah, sorry. So this is kind of what you'd get if you buy some cheap LoRa board from uh, like a Chinese store. There are some available now, which where the radio side is really bad. It's not well designed. Uh, it causes you don't get the range you expect. Then you have to fix those problems. Also, the, the software isn't quite the best uh, and. Maybe the source code isn't available. There's lots of questions around that. So usually, I suggest going to modules. So a little bit of uh, status on the modules. From the forums, I, um, I've identified about 40 modules that are available for sale. And 22 of those have been certified by the LoRa Alliance. So this is kind of important because it tells you that the module will operate correctly in a public LoRaWAN network, for example. Uh, 
uh, and some networks do insist that the modules be uh, certified by the Laura Alliance. It's not necessary though, so they will still work with TTN, for example, and lots of people do that, but it's just a good thing to have, especially if you're developing a commercial product around this. From those 40 modules, I've picked eight popular examples, which I think really are the most uh, interesting and popular modules uh, to find in the forums. Of course, so sorry for all the other modules that I won't mention in this talk. Um, so the first, the first module is, this is super, super popular in the, in the Things Network forum. It's not a real module. It's, they've done the radio side of it. It's called the OPRF96, super popular. Uh, it, it doesn't have any intelligence, so there's no microcontroller, there's no software uh, that you can access running on it. And uh, so you need to plug it to a microcontroller, you need to run a full stack on the microcontroller that will then control this. This is only the radio, which is already a big help. It's actually CE certified already. I don't know if it's been FCC certified, for example, I, there's some questions around that. Uh, it, possibly it may be, but, uh, but it is C certified, so you could use this as part of the radio side of your product. But remember, the LoRa one is not just the radio, you also have the stack, which this doesn't have. Uh, the advantage is it is super cheap, so that's why it's very, very popular on the forums. So. Uh, so that kind of takes me to, okay, so I need a lower one stack for this radio module. Well, how do I go about that? And this will let me also introduce a bit what, what the stacks actually are. So one stack, the original one is from IBM. Uh, uh, lots of people actually involved in TTN uh, have developed it over the time as well. And uh, it, but it, since then it's been abandoned. It's very simple, it's called the LMIC. I think that's how it's uh, uh, said. Uh, and it's currently uh, supported mostly for the Arduino project, so that URL by Matij Koijman, I'm not sure about, yeah, <laughs> maybe you there, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's a really good stack. Uh, you can put it on Arduino and drive uh, a module, uh, RF module like the Hope RF96. Uh, it doesn't have all the features, so and, uh, maybe it does have, but they've not been properly tested very well. It's a small project, so you do have to be uh, careful with that. But it's really good to experiment with. Uh, I wouldn't say go do a commercial product around this, though, because then you have to do all the testing on your own. Uh, so sorry, uh, <laughs> it is a very good stack, though. So the next option will be to take uh, the code from Stackforce. This is the reference implementation. It's available on GitHub. It's open source. And you, you, it's mostly targeted at SD microcontrollers. So that, that's why you find many, many modules using SD microcontrollers as well. Uh, it is complex to port, but it is, it does have several features, including now class B, and especially it's been tested, so it's been field tested. It, it's, a, it's used in several commercial products, so you kind of know that it's, uh, that it's good. Uh, it might not be super correct, uh, every software has bugs, but of course uh, they've been at least been uh, more tested. The final option will be to develop your own custom stack. So the LoRa one uh, specification is, of course, available, and you could uh, write your own code for that. But then you get lots of problems, and it's a very, very difficult task. I wouldn't recommend that. That said, people at Microchip have done that, so they have taken their own custom stack, and it's available on this module, the RN2483. Uh, they've and their own stack running on the, the PIC18 uh, microcontroller inside. And they've made it available to you just through the serial port. So you can send serial commands to it. Uh, it's not exactly AT commands like a modem would be, but it's uh, very similar. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's actually maybe one of the most popular modules because it was one of the first as well. Uh, you can also code the, the PIC18 microcontroller inside, so Microchip provides 
uh, a library called for MP Lab, which is their IDE. And you can uh, then use their stack implementation together with your code for, so for example, you could write code for your sensors. Uh, the code will be C. Uh, it's maybe not the easiest of code. Also, you have to deal with the stack is running as well on the, on the core. And uh, the problem is, if you go for the custom, so imagine if you don't want to use the serial interface, which would require a separate microcontroller to drive it, because you have to have a com uh, another controller sending commands to it. If you don't want to do that, and you want to program the PIC18 inside, then you lose the LoRa 1 certification, because it's uh, you changing things inside the, the code, and Microchip can no longer guarantee that it does work. Uh, one good reference implementation is, of course, the Things Uno uh, board from the Things Network. It's, uh, so they took the RN2483 module, they connected an Arduino to it, and they provide a very nice platform to uh, try it out and de develop around it. In this case, the, the um, <coughs> Arduino side sends those serial commands, so the stack is still certified, it, uh, nothing has been changed on, in the module. Uh, a more advanced module will be the Murata type ABS. This is a very small module. It's very practical if you're doing small applications. Uh, it runs an ARM Cortex M0, so it has a, a powerful chip as well inside. It has some flash, uh, 192 bytes, and it runs the Semtech um, transceiver, the SX1276, which uh, which is also uh, the, the very common. And it provides a UART, all, all kinds of usual microcontroller type interfaces. You do have to program it, so uh, it, it comes, you can use AT commands with it, there's some uh, firmware for it, but you can also program it using a platform called Embed, which is really, uh, which is very interesting, it's provided by ARM themselves. And it includes that LoRa reference stack I mentioned before. So that, that would be a good option. So in this case, they provide this very nice development kit, uh, which uses ST-Link based. So this is kind of the programmer side of it, how it programs the board. You can also program your own chips using this kit. It's very complete. As I said, it supports embed, so you can program it in C. Uh, there's even cloud compilers. You can download compiles. It's all free. And in particular, this board supports a very nice thing, which is drag and drop. So you can just generate the firmware uh, for it, and then uh, the device shows up a US, as a USB drive. You just drop, drag and drop the binary file onto it, and it uh, starts from there, programs the board, and starts from that. Uh, another interesting thing is now they also support Sigfox on this board, so there's no uh, firmware. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's another option to have on this board. It's, it's recently re released. And uh, especially a very interesting the development, and this is really recent, so for, this is coming hot from the TTN forums, is that you can have uh, an Ard Arduino core running on the module. And that also supports LoRa 1 through that stack. And that's really new. It currently only supports this particular board, which is made by Tlericorp, available on Tindy. Uh, but it's, it's Arduino IDE. You can uh, program it with the Arduino as, as an Arduino, really. You don't need anything else. Uh, another platform will be the X dot. So this is a bit more powerful. So it has a Cortex M3 processor, so it's a bit uh, beefier. But it's still the, the default firmware. It's AT command based, so you just send uh, AT commands to uh, join, to send messages, and so on. So it's all very well specified. And like the other module, it also supports embed development in C. So you can uh, use the embed modules for LoRa 1. Uh, it, it has a very nice development kit, so actually it's a very small one. It uses a, a built-in LoRa antenna, a ceramic antenna, which is quite, quite interesting, actually. I found it very interesting. And it, you can also program other modules from this development board. It's, it's, uh, 
it's a nice system um, if you're doing embed development, especially. Uh, the module I'm probably most familiar with is the Laird Centrius. So this is very interesting. They've took a, a Bluetooth LE microcontroller, the Nordic NRF51. They've paired it with the LoRa transceiver, and then they create a, a language on top of it. They added a language called Smart Basic, and that that allows you to program the module in this simple way with Smart Basic access the Bluetooth side, access the LoRa side, and also you don't lose the certification because it, the, the language itself controls the, the way the microcontroller is running, so there is no influence. You, you cannot uh, cause any problems there. So it's a very interesting platform because Smart Basic is very easy. I'll show you on the next slide. And because this, it has this BLE, Bluetooth low energy uh, capabilities. So you can scan nearby beacons, for example, or you can, can be a beacon on yourself. You can talk to mobile apps. It's a very interesting platform, and that's why I've developed uh, quite a few products around it, actually. It's an um, interesting thing. So this is kind of the sample of the Smart Basic. It allows, so you have a very there's a LoRa Mac join function. You just call it and it joins the LoRa one. There's a few things around variables. Deem that bring, brings back some bells if you've done basic before. Uh, so the, the only problem is it's, it is a bit limited. So the memory available is very small. And if you're dealing with complex data structures, you literally go mad because it's very complicated. Uh, but however, it's very good for simple applications where you're doing connecting to a sensor uh, and then sending that data over LoRa. You could easily do that in a few lines. And actually on my GitHub, you can still find example code to do that. Uh, and that kind of brings me to the company I'm in now, so this will be a bit uh, selling my own product. Uh, so we, there's the PyCom modules, the L01. We've paired an ESP32 chip. This has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, both classic and low energy. And we, we paired it with four megabytes of RAM, eight megabytes of flash, the LoRa chip, and it all fits in a very small package. Uh, we also support not just LoRa, but all the other protocols using the same footprint. So you can just change uh, technologies using that. But the main thing, and what's really empowered by the ESP32 and the, uh, all this RAM and Flash, is that we support MicroPython. So you can develop code in MicroPython very easily. It's just a few lines. I'll show you on the next slide. And uh, and you have lots of memory to play with, and you can send LoRa, you can connect to Wi-Fi, you can scan beacons. There's no difference between central or peripheral mode, we support both. Uh, you can even send Sigfox as well, so you can switch between LoRa and Sigfox. It's all possible on the, on the L04. This is kind of a LoRa example using MicroPython. Uh, so just import, uh, LoRa socket, you open the socket, then you create a LoRa connection using the app keys and the settings from uh, the things Netter, for example. Open a socket, and then you send the message. It's really, really easy. You don't need to care about uh, and the low-level stuff. Also connecting to other devices like SPI, I2S, I2S, CAN bus, Modbus, we support all those protocols in Python now. So for development, we have the, the LoPi 4. This is our new board. It has everything. It's got a SX1276 um, transceiver chip on it. And we also have expansion boards for it uh, that you can use with the LoPi, the GPi, or the FiPi, which are other boards. Uh, so if you need a tracker solution very quickly, you can just use the PyTrack, for example. Uh, now, um, moving to a different thing. So there is this also this company called Rack Wireless. This is a new company based in China. They've been doing very popular modules. Uh, they've been uh, popping up in TTN forums a lot. Uh, one of them is the Rack 811. This is a, 
an interesting module. It's very similar to the other ones, like the, um, like the Type ABZ, for example. It uses also the same STM chip. You can run AT command firmware on it as well, so you can connect a, a separate microcontroller and send AT commands to it and uh, connect to LoRa. And there's also an option to run open firmware. In this case, it's available on GitHub. You can do your own development in C. Uh, so it's kind of very similar. It's just popular. But uh, I mentioned this because RAC also, also launched a new module, which is the RAC 813, which has uh, Nordic NRF 52. So that's similar to the Laird module in that in because it uses a Bluetooth low energy chip, but it also supports Bluetooth 5, for example. Uh, so you can do, and it has a lot more memory, uh, floating point support. So it's generally better than the NRF 51. And this is very interesting for uh, low power Bluetooth and LoRa combined applications. So I thought I'd mention it. It's very new, so the software support is still very, very green. Uh, but I'm sure it will develop and, uh, and it will be a very interesting platform. So uh, kind of in conclusion, um, I wouldn't say there is the best module. Of course, PyCom is the best module. <laughs> I'd have like to say that. Uh, no, it, actually, uh, PyCom, you, you, it is still, I mean, the size is maybe not right for your application. Uh, the, the code style might not be the best. You don't like Python, maybe. And if you don't like Python, then implementing the LoRa one stuck in C will be hard, because you'd have to do it yourself. We only support Python. Um, it is possible still, so there is a community around the SP32. But I think there is no single answer for LoRa modules. It depends very much on your application and what, what you need from it. But especially, you have to understand your development resources very well. So for example, you need to know, can I, can I really do a LoRa one stack uh, from scratch, for example? It might be difficult. And also, there is a long development time. It's always longer than one person expects. And if you want to do a quick prototype to show a customer, it's important to pick a module that will enable that, that uh, uh, speed of development. Especially things support. I mean, one of the great things about RAC and PyCam is that we offer great support. So if you write to RAC, there is a very active forum. Also on the PyCam side, there's a very active forum. There are forums for the other uh, modules, but uh, I, I've never got a, as quick as an, an answer, like from PyCom. That's why I joined PyCom, actually, because you can talk to the developers directly, and also for RAC. So you, that's a very interesting aspect that most people don't think about. And actually, if you write, if you write to PyCom support, I'll see your email myself, and I may be able to write, uh, reply to you very quickly. It's uh, the advantage of being a small company, I guess. Um, so I guess that's a very short overview of the modules. I've tried to just make it interesting. Of course, there's a lot of depth into each module, uh, which I didn't go about. So, but uh, do have a try and uh, go build. Uh, if you have any questions now, I can uh, definitely answer them. Well, thank you very much, Jose. <laughs> thank you. I have to say, no reason to be modest about PyCom, because well, even though it's a small company, you also have been building a very large community. Yeah. And, and like the Things Network, you, you developed exponential growth like a roller coaster. So I would like to start with a personal question. How did you experience this roller coaster growth in the last two years? Uh, so I only joined PyCom two months ago. I started on their forums as well, like the TTN. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I followed the... the the, how the company has evolved since um, really 2016 when they launched the LoPi Kickstarter. It's been uh, really amazing. So they've since then they've developed more than 10 new boards. So it's a pace I've never ever seen before in other companies. It's mm. really crazy. 
uh, and, uh, and they, but they're delivering it. They're putting products out there. It's 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 really impressive, and it's great to be part of the team now that the company is very open. I think that's how it moves so quickly. Yes, it did. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments to Jose? Yeah, in the back. Uh, ah, right, you. Hello, where are you from? Uh, Anders um, from Sweden, Tele Laura Mann operator. Uh, so I have a question about uh, the Arduino uh, world, uh, and you said uh, the Elmic uh, product is abandoned. Do you know if there's someone picking up either that? So, so the Arduino core is, is not a, being abandoned, it's actually being developed. No, but the, I mean the El, Elmic. Oh, Elmic, the original yeah. project? Yeah, uh, that's abandoned, you said. Right? I think so, yes. Yeah, I think from, so also. Yeah, from uh, what I hear from uh, the IBM didn't uh, continue no. with it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and there is, of course, flaws in that, I've seen that. But, but uh, do you know if there are other alter alternatives to that? Or if somebody I, picking up, because I guess... I don't know. So many, all, almost all the modules I know run either, uh, it's either microchip or they will run a stack force okay. or Elmic module code. Yeah, I don't know any other <laughs> so kind okay. of stack. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see some people waiting in the back. There's still place available here if you want to have a seat. So, Okay, any other questions? Oh, over there. That's the hands. Hello, where are you from? Uh, from New Zealand. I'd just like to ask, um, if, uh, when is the support for AS923 going to be uh, launched? For PyCom, you mean? PyCom, yeah. Yes, that's something I didn't mention. So for like the X dot has excellent support for all the regions, and PyCom we really should. Uh, we, we're doing development on that now. Uh, I'd say next month, probably, it will be available. Thank you. And okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Anyone else? Last call? <laughs> no? Well, then I have to say, uh, Jose, thank you very much for this guided tour to the candy store much. and being so supportive on the forum. <laughs>